Hey guys, Becky here, 5-2 Baker. Welcome back. This week we'll be working on a beautiful open rose. I love the wildness of each of these petals just opening and uncurling and I think it's so pretty and such a classic flower. So I hope you guys really enjoy this tutorial. Let's get right to it. The first thing we're going to need is the center of our flower. So using a 26 or 28 gauge wire, make a large exaggerated hook on it. And then using some thread, usually I'll use an embroidery thread, but for this one, I'm going with a stiff cotton thread in yellow because I just think it has a better hold and looks a little bit more natural because it's thinner. So go ahead and wrap it around your finger a ton of times. It's just going to depend on how fat you want your center to be. I'm going for a pretty fat center. And make sure not to cut off circulations of your fingers the way I am. Once you're happy with the amount that you have, go ahead and hook that big hook from your wire onto one end and twist the wire around itself so that these threads don't escape. Make sure it's nice and tight. You're going to do the same thing with your other wire to the other end so you end up with two centers for your roses. Once they're nicely adhered, you go ahead and grab another piece of thread and we're going to tie the two open ends together. So just tie a little knot as close to the wire as you can to keep those all bunched up together. This part can be a little tricky, so if you have something to attach your wire to or someone to hold it for you, that's super helpful. We're gonna go ahead and do that on both ends for each of our rose centers. Once they're both nicely tied, go ahead and cut the thread down the center and you'll have your two centers. Go ahead and tug out any little scragglies that you have. I like having some higher than others. It just looks a little more natural to me so that they're not all flat looking like a buzz cut. But be gentle because you don't want to pull it all the way out. Once I'm happy with it, I'll go ahead and get my pollen dust ready and I'll dip my center into some edible glue and then dip them into the pollen dust that I have. My pollen dust is a mixture of half cornmeal and half yellow color dust. And then using a pointed tool, I'm just going to go ahead and separate any threads that may be sticking together a little bit too much. And once I'm happy with it, I set it off to the side to dry. While the center is drying, now I'm going to start working on my petals. I'm just looking for a white rose, so I'm just going to use my flower paste uncolored. Most of my petals will be threaded with wire, so I will be using the veining board. As far as cutters go, the cutters that I am using are three almost consecutive sizes. I'm starting with the smallest being three centimeters, the next one about four, and then the largest one about five, five and a half centimeters. For each of these petals, I'm going to go through the exact same process of cutting it out, adhering my wire to it, and my wire is about a 28 gauge maybe a 26 if you want a little bit more stability or if your petals will be heavier. And then I go ahead and with a rolling ball tool, I'm going to give it almost a heart shape. In this case, I needed my scissors to cut out a little bit of the center, but if you can stretch it out with just a rolling ball tool, that will be just fine. 
I want to make sure my ends are nice and thin so it looks more natural and that my center is a little bit thicker so that it holds that wire well. Then I pop it into my veiner, give it a good press because this veiner is very faint. And then I pop it onto a wavy foam board. Using a toothpick or another wire, I go ahead and curl the tips a bit and I wanna make sure that this sort of cups in so that it looks like one of the newer petals that are still curled in the center of the rose. Now, in case you want some really, really small petals that are still forming, you can go ahead and do this freehand without any wires. I just sort of form a little bit of a longer, thinner, little heart-shaped rose petal. And I'm doing this all freehand with my hands. These petals are still forming so they don't have to be perfect. And then I'll go through the same process of once I have the shape that I like, I'll vein it and then I'll put it on my wavy foam board give it some curl so that it dries up. Again, these, I want them to be cupped inwards so that it looks like they are coming out of the center and they're still trying to open up. I'm going to follow the same process for all my petals and the number of petals is going to depend on you, but if you want mine as a guide, the wireless ones, which are the smallest ones, I have about three. Then the small ones, five, medium ones, three, and the largest ones, five again. It's not a whole bunch of petals. I'm just looking for a wilder, more curled up, open version of a rose. This part is entirely optional, but when I have a white rose or any white flower, I like to add a little bit of green to the base just to give it some color and make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to mix a little bit of a lime green and a dark sage green so that I get a middle of the road green. I just don't happen to have one. So if you do, no need to mix. And then for each of my petals, I'll start at the base and I'll dust it up a little bit. Any extra dust, I'll use a clean fluffy brush to get it off just so that it doesn't get all over my rose and it stays at the bottom and at the base. I'll go ahead and repeat this for the front and the back of each of my petals. Now that all my petals are colored and set, I'm going to begin attaching it. So I'll make sure I have some green floral tape and I actually want mine to be split in half because the center of my rose has a very small base that I'm starting with. So I don't want all the extra clunk of the floral tape. Once I have that, I give it a little stretch and I wrap it around my center. I'm going to wrap it around that little ball part that's underneath where we tied all the threads. And then I'll start off with my smallest wired petals and I'll add them one by one all around the center. I don't have a perfect number of petals to go around evenly, but that's okay because I just want to fit these wherever it looks like my flower needs them. So if you feel like you need more petals, then definitely make more. And if you feel like you need less, then you make less. Each rose can be different and that will be completely beautiful. I'll go ahead and one by one add each of my petals all the way around my rose, trying to make sure they overlap and are not stacked on each other and trying to make sure that I keep the tape as close to the base of the wire as I can so that I don't see wire and I don't see a gap.
Once all of my petals are added, then I go ahead and open up the entire rose so that I can see where I can fit these non-wired ones, where they'll look best. So I test it out first without any of the edible glue. And once I'm happy and I found a placement for them, I go ahead and add some edible glue to the bottom base on the back of the unwired petal and I glue them to one of these small petals that do have a wire. So now whether I open or close the rows, they will move with those wired petals. Because it's such a small space, you might need a Dresden tool or something else to make sure they're adhered well. And now the last thing that I'm going to do, because this is a white rose, sometimes it sort of gets lost because it's all white. So I'll just go ahead and dust a little bit of a mixture of green and brown to the edges almost as an outline, but I don't do it across the entire petal. I want it to be a light look without having it be overpowering. A little bit goes a very long way. And that's it. You just adjust your petals. Of course, a calyx and leaves would be absolutely gorgeous and just take it up another level, but the rose is complete and beautiful. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. I would super appreciate that. And if you have any questions or comments, please do drop them down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. If not, I will see you guys for the next tutorial.